What is going on guys? Welcome to today's video where we tear out this 3 litre turbo diesel engine from the BMW X5 in the corner here. Now this is the legendary M57 engine and we're fitting it to a 105 series Land Cruiser. So let's get to it. Right, so we've got the X5 moved in here with the M57 diesel in it. These things are getting more and more common to swap, mostly patrols, but I'm going to be the first on YouTube to actually log putting a M57 into a 105 Land Cruiser. Now it's definitely been done out there. There's a few pages on Facebook or forums and stuff of people putting these engines in. Lots of different things, Land Rover Defenders, patrols, uh, even some Navarros and things. But yeah, we're gonna go into 105 Cruiser. Again, fuel economy on the 1FZ FE is terrible. Don't even wanna bother with that. I've always liked diesel, much preferred diesel. I uh, got that thing only because it was cheap. So gonna try and do this on the cheap. I'm gonna do electrical myself. Gonna do most of the plumbing and everything. Uh, everything that we can do myself, I'm going to pull this engine down and check the bottom end and everything, uh, do timing chains and all that sort of stuff to it. So we're definitely going to make a nice runner here. Um, I, I will have to outsource the ECU and things like that but uh, and uh, trans adapter because I don't have the tools to do all that. But let's get this engine pulled out. Okay, so that didn't take too long. Hardest part was getting the radiator out with that fan on here. So for anyone that's actually gonna do that, loosen the nut that way, tighten it that way. So it's reverse thread, obviously. So yeah, got all that out and pulled out. That big scuttle thing was really hard to get off. I had to do that and get all the wiring out. That's all taped up and wrapped up in here. ECU's out of the way, out of harm's way. Right, so we got the front off much easier to get it out this way. Pretty much done, done everything, exhaust, shifter, and uh, tail shaft is undone. Now I'm sure there's gearbox lines and stuff that I've forgotten about. So we'll get this thing up a bit higher and we should be able to lower the cross member down or the front sub frame, sorry, and the cross member, rear cross member, get it down and hopefully it'll come straight out nice and easy. All right, so I'm not sure how this is gonna work. Ideally, I would've had the engine crane in the center, jacks it up that way and then the motor to slide out, but it just wasn't gonna work with the amount of space. If only I had like an overhead crane or a hoist. It'd be a little easier, but let's see if we've disconnected everything. Is there not always one hose that's been left and now under tension? Forgotten about. Let's see how much this relieves. It's not so bad. Honestly, for anyone watching this and scared to be pulling this out, I haven't done an engine removal in years, and this has got to be one of the easiest cars ever. Everything's just so modular, it just comes out of place. It's just just so easy. The engine only disconnects the engine wiring, it's just two plugs into the ECU, that's it. On the top, like just, it's unreal how easy this thing is. So we've got a lot going on that's gonna get rid of. So we're gonna get rid of all, obviously all the front differential stuff, suspension, K-frame, we're gonna do all that off camera, that's boring stuff. Having a quick look, look at this. Loose bolt, and it's all dusty, so you can see it hasn't been in for a long time. Isn't that strange? Maybe someone's been in there playing around. Too bad those transfer cases can't be used for anything. I think they're full time, all the time. You can't really select high, low, So we got the engine out of this thing and I just got the K-frame put back in. That was a mammoth job. It was actually harder than pulling the freaking engine out of the whole car. So we got that sitting here at the moment and I've just got to build a trolley for it. So we're gonna do that here next. So I happen to grab this steel from the scrap metal bin at work and some of these legs, these hold a fair bit of weight. So hopefully these will be strong enough. We'll have to cut these down obviously. It's all getting thrown out, so all this is all built for nothing. So I got a frame just like this. I've just realized that this one here is slightly bent, but that'll be okay. I'm pretty sure. So we just got this one squared up at the front here. Tack it, square the back.
Okay, so here's our frame. I had to cut it back apart at the back to actually get this thing in there. So I'm gonna slide it in and weld it all there. That way we can just unbolt the rear cross member and unbolt the two front engine mounts and the thing can come out. That was the easiest way to build this and I will have to do that to get that front differential apart. But anyway, weld it together, scabbed a little bit of crappy stuff there to make these engine mounts work. It's just to hold it against the frame. So I get this thing fitted up and then the wheels put on and we're done. So there you have it, we've got the stand completely made. It's a little sketchy thinking that this thing is balancing on work that I've done. But uh, it seems to be holding up pretty good and it sort of moves around the workshop okay. I definitely want to sweep the floor before anything. I just keep picturing that, I'll try and get up on the screen, that fella that lifted the motor and it just fell and smashed straight on the floor. I keep referring to that, but that would really suck if that happened. So yeah, at this point, we've got it on the stand. It's all ready to go. Pretty much what I want to do is mount the radiator up on the front. In the next video, we're going to remove all the wiring out of the vehicle and we'll set it up on the stand here. And I want to get this thing running. So that's going to be really exciting. And I'm really wanting to go in depth with the wiring because that's something I feel Feel like isn't covered very well so if you are watching by this point of the video thanks for sticking around definitely consider subscribing there's gonna be a lot more content coming up on this m57 conversion I'm really excited to start this mechanical and electrical is my background so it's really exciting to actually be able to do this on the channel and uh, bring sort of a new new bit of content now the reason why I actually chose a BMW motor uh, if I had said that years ago I definitely would not have thought I'd be doing this I chose it because the price is one and reliability is the other. These things are super reliable with heaps of horsepower. If you go get the 1HD FTE, it's very, very expensive. It's like $20,000 for the motor. You have to have absolutely everything to get the thing running. But the cost is really what swung me to this engine. Putting this thing in and getting it running in the car is going to be a lot cheaper than a 1HD FTE. And 1HZ is the only other engine I could have put in the 105 without engineering it. And yeah, they're pretty slow. So stay tuned for the next video. Make sure you guys hit the subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss out on anything. I'll catch you in the next one.